political panel. Uh, Zed Soselja can't be with us uh, this morning, so uh, subbing in for him is uh, the man in Lycra, Liberal member for Hume, Angus Taylor. G'day, Angus. <laughs> G'day, thanks for having me. You, you're not wearing Angus at the moment. Uh, we're not wearing uh, Lycra at the moment. No, we finished yesterday right. afternoon, Excellent. thankfully for everyone. Excellent, good, because I don't know if I could talk to you if uh, if you were. <laughs> and um, representing uh, the Labor Party, the member for Bean is David Smith. G'day, David. Uh, good morning, Steve. And, and look, uh, no congratulations to Angus and uh, as we took part in that uh, really, really important uh, fundraiser. Yeah, the polypedal's been going for quite a number of years now, Angus. Uh, I, I imagine this one was probably a little bit different, though, with COVID-19 rules in place. It, it was different. Look, this has been going since 1998. We've done over 20,000 kilometres, raised $7 million for many causes. Uh, this year, Soldier On, veterans, a fantastic cause. Uh, but we couldn't do a normal polypedal. We'd normally have about 40 or 50 riders. We had less than 15 and a much smaller group, but fantastic ride. Went down through the fire-affected areas in southern New South Wales and brilliant to, to spend time with those fire units that played such an important role over the summer. I remember back in, uh, it must have been 2010 uh, or 2011, when uh, the polypedal, uh, for some reason, somebody decided that you're all going to paddle up Dor Dorigo Mountain. Uh, Tony <laughs> Abbott pedalled all the way. Lou Kartsuka might have got a ride in the back of a car. From what yeah, that was up to Nimitabel, where, where I grew up. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, hell of, a, hell of a ride up through there. But, um, no, we, uh, it was a little easy, but not too much this time. We went into a 65k wind down, he head into it from uh, down to Canberra. Uh, over the weekend and went through Canberra, but really fantastic ride. Now, we need to, do need to talk. Changes to JobKeeper have come into place this week uh, with the payment reduced and the criteria tightened. Uh, this way, subsidy, it shrunk now from $1,500 a fortnight to 1200 for full-time employees, 750 for part-timers. Angus, my concern with this is, and, and look, and I understand this, can, this couldn't possibly last forever, but the idea was that JobKeeper was supposed to prevent businesses from shedding employees. Uh, haven't all, we, all we've done now is basically kick the problem down the road and uh, aren't businesses now going to get rid of employees and they'll go on to JobSeeker instead? Well, no, I don't think that is necessary and it's certainly not what we want, but we do have to uh, come out of this. As you said uh, earlier in, your, in this segment, that it's important we come out from under the doona, we, we get back to work. Obviously, lots of people have kept working throughout, but it is important we get the economy up and running. And as we said at the start, we were going to scale this back over time. We're doing it uh, piece by piece. Um, you can go from 1,200 up to almost 1,500 with uh, extra part-time work. So um, we're strongly encouraging people to get back into work. The incentives are aligned that way. And uh, certainly that's the objective. And as you said, look, we, we have really struggling at the moment. Fruit picking you, was a great example you, you, you gave a moment ago. We can't get fruit pickers in this country. We've got a, the, what will be probably the biggest grain crop we've had for years and years and years. And we can't get people working on the grain crop. So we've got to get people back to work. This is crucially important. David, how do we do that? How do we address the cultural problem that we seem to have had for years and years that we can't get unemployed Aussies to go and do this farm work? Well, Stephen, what we're seeing at the moment is is a much, much larger problem than that. And I think uh, certainly what we can't do in relation to the jobs that we've lost at the moment is that we we won't be able to address it unless we have a comprehensive uh, jobs plan to uh, to deal with it. And uh, look, uh, you know, there are some real there are some real challenges in terms of uh, uh, some of those elements around uh, agricultural work. Uh, obviously. Uh, uh, you, you can't you can't expect uh, people who've got uh, families with leases with mortgages uh, to to be able to just uh, necessarily up up sticks and uh, and move uh, out of the region. So what we need is something that's more comprehensive, and we need to have a plan. Well, that, hang on, David. Let me uh, let me just stop you there for a moment because across the region and across the city. David, I've got to stop you there because the unemployment rate is always higher in regional areas, so people don't have to move. Oh, and, and look, I'm, I, what, I, what I'm saying, Stephen, is the challenge we have now is, is much, much, much larger. And uh, look, there obviously some of the challenges that have been exacerbated are that there's been obviously a, a reliance on uh, 
workers who are also here for, for holidays. Uh, it's been a way where people have been able to get around the country and see so much of the country and put money back into the economy more broadly. But, you know, there, there are obviously some, some significant, some broader significant challenges. So, Angus, what is the government's plan to get people back to work? Well, that's what JobMaker's all about. I mean, I've announced in the last 10 days uh, what we're doing on energy, making sure we've got affordable gas, we're using technology to bring down the cost of, of energy and bring down emissions at the same time. This is all about getting jobs in manufacturing, but energy's used in agriculture and transport. Look, and the whole job maker plan, you'll see much more of it as we approach the budget. Digital jobs we're talking about today, uh, in, you'll have seen in the papers. So, look, we, we are doing a great deal of this, but you've got to remember, you know, the private sector creates jobs. We can help to facilitate that, but it's the private sector that creates jobs, um, and we've got to get the private sector back up and running. And the truth is, there are many job opportunities around. Uh, we really, really want to encourage people to get in and have a crack. I know in Goulburn, where I live, um, there are job opportunities. We're seeing that. I'm talking to employers; they're looking for employees. You know, it's time to get out from under the doona, get get going again. David, what uh, as far as the job plan goes, what's the what's the opposition's take on this? Well, look, I guess our, our real concern is, you know, why would you actually be withdrawing support from the economy unless there was a comprehensive jobs plan? You know, and, and what we do know is that there's effectively uh, 30, 13 uh, people for every job that's available at the moment. So, OK, but, but isn't, it's, isn't it's this the time... But isn't this the time to stop the petty politicking and come up with some ideas? Oh, Absolutely, and I guess that's that's what we're frustrated about. Is uh, it's actually a really important time to still be providing that economic support right right across our community. I, I held a, a small business forum only a few weeks ago, and you know the immediate uh, consequence of uh, cutting back on job. Keeper without a real change in the economic environment is, is basically employ, employees losing their hours, and effectively businesses actually in a in a more difficult position to actually come back. So, look, I guess the, frust the frustrating thing for us, and it is a hard, it's it's a difficult time with uh, many of these issues. Is it just doesn't make sense why you wouldn't marry up these changes with a, with a comprehensive jobs plan. But but that's what I'm saying to you, David. I mean, it sounds to me like your only answer is keep the welfare going. No, no not, not, not at all. But, you know, it, we, we haven't been in the government for, for seven years. We've, we've said it's actually really important to be looking at uh, uh, labour market programs. And I guess our, what we're surprised by, what, what we'd like to actually see is... You know, some evidence that there's some you know, really strong thinking about uh, a jobs plan uh, right, right, right across this country. And I guess that's, that's where a fair bit of our frustration is. May, maybe that will change next week. I guess, you know, maybe, maybe that's what, what, what we might see through the budget. But certainly, at, at the moment, what, what, it, what it pretty much means for businesses uh, in, in Canberra and across the ACT is that they can see that there's going to be enor enormous pressure uh, that affect effectively uh, ho our hospitality and retail areas, which are starting to come back a bit, but still under a lot of pressure, are going to see uh, significantly less spending. Angus, has the government backflipped on the NBN? No, absolutely not. I mean, look, the whole goal of the NBN was to get this thing up and running and do what businesses do. You build the good product and then you build from that good product. I mean, that's that's how you do things. That's how I did things in business for many years before I went into politics. We've taken a, a commercial business-like approach to getting the NBN out. And, you know, if we'd stuck with that original plan, there'd be many Australians, the Labor's original plan done on the back of the serviette by... Kevin Rudd, there'd be many Australians who wouldn't have had ex access to NBN during the recent coronavirus, and that would have been a complete disaster. Now, the truth is uh, that um, we saw the internet and NBN working remarkably well over that time period under enormous pressure. And we're now in a position where we can, we can upgrade for those businesses and households who want to. Many won't want to, but some will, uh, and we're doing exactly that. Now, that's the way you build a business and build a product over time. That's exactly what we're doing with the NBN. David, is, hasn't 5G basically made the NBN redundant, though? No, no, de definitely not. And look, the, the idea that this isn't a backflip, this is sort of a, a backflip uh, fo followed by the splits. I mean, it's it's sort of we're rebuilding over a, a network that we knew that was uh, always going to be a bit of a problem. So it's it's good uh, in the end where, we, where we're going to get to. But, you know, we're, we've... 
ended up spending a hell of a lot more money than we should have. Now, just quickly, uh, gentlemen, um, Susan Ryan, the ACT's first Labor senator and uh, first woman to serve in a Labor cabinet, passed away uh, at the weekend, age 77. Uh, regardless of what you what, what side of politics you come from, an absolute giant, Angus. Yeah, absolutely. She was a groundbreaker. I sort of grew up in this region. She was a she was a big figure across the region, uh, you know, for a long while back. And uh, no doubt she she well she was a groundbreaker in in, in uh, the role of women. She was the first Labor cabinet minister, as I understand it, which is an extraordinary achievement. So uh, rem remarkable woman. And uh, David, as a as a local MP in this area, a fairly long shadow. Oh, I, I, absolutely, uh, Stephen. And so, you know, when I f first started to get involved, uh, it sort of almost dovetailed when uh, uh, Susan Ryan was moving, moving into uh, uh, the private sector, if you like. Uh, but she cast a, an enormous, enormous uh, shadow and, you know, obviously amazing groundbreaking achievements in terms of the uh, uh, equality for, for women across workplaces, across so many areas of endeavour. But, you know, one of the, one of the real... Uh, main achievements too was uh, she was responsible for uh, getting completion rates up in year 12. You know, in, in 1983 it used to be uh, three and ten, we ended up in nine and ten. And look, in later life, in incredibly generous with her time. I I sort of recall sort of uh, having a number of conversations with Susan in a different role, where pretty much about you know the you know the issues that many Australians face. Uh, older Australians face with, with age discrimination in work. You know, it's a real issue that we still have to come to terms with. Uh, an amazing uh, Australian and, and a great lot. Absolutely. Uh, Angus Taylor, David Smith, thank you for your time this morning. Thanks, David. Thanks, David. David.